good morning students i am hima bindu lecturer in english working in sir c r r college for women today i am going to deal with the third semester english paper which is common for all ug programs like ba bcom bsc now the topic is about a poem once upon a time which is written by gabriel okara you can see the photograph of Gabriel Okara here Gabriel Okara he was born in the year 1921 and died in 2019 that means he had lived for 99 years he is considered to be one of the first modern african poets he was born in nigeria he uses folk lore religion myth and social issues to explore tradition and transition in his works his work first appeared in the magazine called black orpheus this poem is included in his book the fisherman's invocation which was published in the year 1978 his writings may be described as highly original and uninfluenced by other poets that means he was not influenced by any other poets of his age he has been extremely successful in apprehending the moods sight and sounds of africa his poems shows great sensitivity perceptive judgment and a tremendous energy coming to the background introduction to the poet which helps us to understand the poem in a better way Nigeria was under British rule from 1901 to 1960. They fight for independence. Later, it became republic in the year 1963. Gabriel Okara was born when Nigeria was being ruled by Britishers. When he was 39 years, Britishers left Nigeria. So, the poet has witnessed, lived, experienced. two different cultures that's why we can see the contrast between the two cultures in this particular poem once upon a time western people have immensely implied their thoughts culture religion everything on natives introduction to the poem poet shows concern over what happens when the ancient culture of africa comes in contact with the modern western culture the poet feels sad for the loss of genuineness warm feelings in natives those good qualities are replaced by artificial politeness it shows the nostalgic and sentimental feelings of the poet you can see the technique of nostalgia in this poem that means he always goes back into his past memories and compares with the present and the people have good qualities like uh, being genuine and uh, showing love and affection towards the other people but those good qualities are replaced by the artificial politeness in the present modern society coming to the poem once upon a time we will look into the poem stanza wise altogether The poem consists of 43 lines and it has divided into seven stanzas. Through the first line once upon a time son through this line we can understand that the father is addressing his son and through the phrase once upon a time uh, we can also understand that it is like a fairy tale because things were happened once in the past and there is no chance of happening the same things again in the present uh, you can also understand that the mood of the poet is the mood of the father is sad and nostalgic because in the first three lines he explains about how the natives were in the past and in the next three lines he explains how the people are at present that means we can see the contrast between the present and the past we can also understand the 
relationship between the father and the son is very intimate that's why the father is able to express all his feelings to his son and sharing his uh, sharing his feelings to his son see the poem once upon a time son they used to laugh with their hearts and laugh with their eyes but now they only laugh with their teeth while their eyes block cold eyes search behind my shadow they here the word they refers to the natives here the natives have a habit of uh, laughing with their hearts when they meet the other person and laugh with their eyes we all know that smiling is the best way to greet one another and smile has a power to change the mood of the other person and it makes one happier in all kinds of situations even though he is feeling very sad so the natives used to smile each other wholeheartedly by looking deep into the eyes with warm and affectionate face when they meet the other person we can understand that uh, there was an unconditional love between the natives coming to the next three lines but now they only laugh with their teeth but after the colonization the people's attitudes were changed very much they laugh only for the sake of laughing and they are not laughing out of real happiness and true affection although they are smiling and laughing their true intentions and their inner feelings are entirely different while their eyes block cold eyes here the eyes block cold eyes the word suggests the emotionless eyes eyes block cold eyes that means emotionless eyes they are searching behind my shadow that means whoever he meets they had some kind of selfish intentions and they look for some kind of benefit which they can get from the other by keeping artificial smile and a forced smile coming to the next stanza here also you can see the contrast between the present and the past there was a time indeed they used to shake hands with their hearts but that's gone son now they shake hands without hearts while their left hands search my empty pockets he explains about the custom of greeting in this particular stanza in olden days people used to involve all their senses to acknowledge the presence of the others a greeting with a grip of handshake and a, with a large smile indicates that you are connecting with the other person from the bottom of your heart but the father is saying in a sad tone that's gone son that good old days has gone so the poet is feeling very much sad for the loss of the good olden days now present day now they shake hands without hearts while their left hand search my empty pockets now at present days people shake hands just for the sake of greeting but there is no connectiveness and true affection concern towards the other person they became very selfish self centered greedy and possessive they don't want to miss an opportunity of taking advantage of a person they meet that's why they are searching uh, their empty pockets they don't want to miss the opportunity and uh, that's why they use their right hand to shake and left hand for grabbing something from others pockets even though the other person doesn't get any valuable things from others they look even for the smallest benefit which they can get coming to the third stanza in the third stanza the poet explains about what he has noticed in the present day society see the stanza feel at home come again they say and when i come again and feel at home once twice there will be no thrives for then i find doors shut on me here if you observe the first line feel at home come again these are the phrases we use in our everyday life when we meet or uh, depart someone sometimes people invite us to their homes with sugar coated words like this feel at home come again 
but at the bottom of their heart the true feelings are entirely different they are cold hearted and the words they are using are all artificial words and they are behaving like hypocrites if we take their words for granted and if you visit their home once it is good twice it is okay and third time you can see the doors shut on your face so the poet has understood that the native african society has completely disappeared these are the changes he has observed in the present day society coming to the fourth stanza here in the fourth and fifth stanzas the poet has explained about how the society has influenced him to change his behavior in a negative way you can see the negative changes so i have learned many things son i have learned to wear many faces like dresses home face office face street face host face cocktail face with all their conforming smiles like a fixed portrait smile here he is confessing the poet is confessing that he too has learned many unwanted things knowingly or unknowingly because of the society's influence impact of the society he was also changed that's why he is confessing that i too has learned many unwanted things and he also learned not to be kind not to be real not to be genuine but to be greedy and materialistic so he has learned to wear many faces like dresses when he is at home he wear he wears a face which is accepted by the members of his family and when he is at a office he wear he wears an office face which is accepted by his colleagues while walking on the streets he he wears a street face when while he was walking on the road he says hi or hello to his neighbors when someone visits his home he wears a host face and sometimes cocktail face which means a face which suits to all kinds of situations you know the meaning of cocktail uh, a mixture of different ingredients like spirit fruit juice and wine likewise he also uh, wearing a face like a cocktail face which suits to all kind of situations so all together he has learned to put a fixed portrait smile on his face that means unchanging and static expression which does not indicate his true feelings we can understand that he is hiding all his negative qualities and behaving in a positive way that means he is behaving like a hypocrite he is hiding all his real feelings uh, by wearing all the masks like home face of his face street face of host face cocktail face coming to the fifth stanza and i have learned to to laugh with only my teeth and shake hands without my heart i have also learned to say goodbye when i mean good riddance to say glad to meet you without being glad and to say it's been nice talking to you after being bored here in this stanza he is telling that he has also learned to laugh with his teeth to shake hands without heart that means all the positive qualities has gone the good old days has gone and he was influenced by the society now he is laughing only with his teeth and he is uh, shaking hands with others uh, without any heart and he also learned to say what to say to say goodbye when he means good riddance which means he is feeling happy for the loss or departure of that particular person and he is feeling very happy in his heart but saying a goodbye and he has also learned to say glad to meet you when he is not really feeling glad to meet the 
other person even though he is feeling uh, he is not feeling very much glad or ha- uh, glad or happy to meet the other person outwardly he is saying that he is very much glad to meet the person and he has also learned to say nice talking to you when he is really feeling bored to talk to the other person his inner feelings are entirely different but the outspoken words are different coming to the sixth stanza in this stanza the poet expresses about his wish in an optimistic manner but believe me son i want to be what i used to be when i was like you i want to unlearn all these muting things most of all i want to relearn how to laugh for my laugh in the mirror shows only my teeth like a snake's bare fangs here the great thing in the poet is that he has realized that what he had learned all these years are bad things muting things that's why he wants to unlearn all the muting things uh, through the years of his life what he had developed the qualities he had developed by the influence of the society were all bad things muting things he realized the fact and now uh, he want to unlearn all the muting things and he wants to go back to the good old days of immense hospitality and uh, he requests his son to teach him how to be a matter of fact how to be genuine he is uh, requesting his son to teach him generally a father teaches his son and helps him to grow in his life here the paradox is that the father wants his son's help to unlearn the negative habits he had developed in his life through that negative change the father was unable to see the genuine smile on his face when he was able to see the smile in front of the mirror he was able to see just a snake's bare fangs that means cruelty there is no joy happiness in his smile coming to the next stanza so show me son how to laugh show me how i used to laugh and smile once upon a time when i was like you in the last stanza you can see the father's plea to his son father's request to his son which is unpractical and unachievable here the son is a symbol of innocence purity happiness and genuineness which is lacking in the present day society all these good qualities innocence purity happiness genuineness we cannot find in the present modern society that's why the father wants to unlearn all the a uh, muting things and he want to be genuine he want to learn from his son to be genuine honest and sincere once we will see the summary of the poem once upon a time is a free verse poem that focuses on a father's attitude to cultural change and the times past before the incoming western culture affected the native african way of life it also explains about the emptiness of modern life everything we do is artificial why we call this particular poem is in free verse because there is no particular rhyme scheme we cannot find any rhyme scheme in the poem that's why we call it as a free verse and we can see the artificial artificial behavior in the present modern society in the poem the man addresses the son telling him in a rather nostalgic manner how things used to be people were different back then more genuine it seemed and that it and that is what the speaker would like to do now return to a restored world if he can only learn the early stanzas revealing more of the negative changes that have occurred during the father's lifetime he is old enough to have watched decent human standards drop to the wayside 
as western ideals gradually took over you can see the change the speaker wants to relearn from the as at untamed son how to laugh and be genuine again it's rather a pathetic plea coming from the adult to the youngster for that can the son realistically do can the clocks be put back can an ancient culture be retrieved from the overwhelming modern culture now we can discuss about the themes which are used in this particular poem the first theme is how society changes we can see in the poem how the african society's people were changed how uh, their attitudes were changed when compared to the present day modern society the second theme is cultural shift we can also the see, see the theme of cultural shift it couldn't be brought overnight but the negative cultural shift was brought in by the westerns in their ruling over the years earlier the natives way of inviting greeting is entirely different when compared to the present day modern society this negative cultural shift was completely absolutely the result of the colonization the third theme is values native people have good values and principles they respect each other invite heartfully others to their homes and show true love and affection but whereas in the modern society people are just using sugar coated words and hiding their real nature and just behaving like hypocrites all the good qualities uh, after the colonization were disappeared we can see the poet portraying all the qualities in a very well manner the last theme is influence after the britishers invaded africa they imposed their religion culture tradition language on the natives and this influence was very much on natives through that influence they became greedy selfish and self centered here all this we have discussed in the introduction part here in this poem the father was much influenced by the society and learn the muting things so we can understand that the poet as well as the society were very much influenced by the britishers next topic is literary devices here the first literary device used in this particular poem is assonance means two or more words are close together in a line and have similar sounding vowels for example if you observe the first line once upon a time sun see the vowel sounds coming in the same line upon on sun on the same similar sounds coming in a single line the next literary device is enjambment enjambment means a line runs on into the next line without stop or pause but maintains the sense generally in a poem a line ends with full stop or comma or colon or semicolon but here without any punctuation mark the line shifts to the another line if you observe in the first stanza second line they used to laugh with their hearts and laugh with their eyes second line ends without any punctuation mark and the third line has started but it doesn't uh, lose its sense likewise in the second stanza if you observe the fourth line and fifth line now they shake hands without hearts while their left hands search my empty pockets here there is no punctuation mark at the end of fourth and fifth lines if you find in each and every stanza you can find a uh, many enjambments the next uh, literary device is alliteration alliteration means the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words two same consonant sounds coming side by side 
the meaning of alliteration is the consonant sounds coming side by side here in the second stanza fourth line if you observe hands without hearts adjacent words hands hearts ha sound consonant sound is repeating likewise in the fifth stanza eighth line being bored ba sound is repeating being bored the next uh, literary device is simile simile means comparing two similar things by using the words like or as by using the words like or as we are comparing two similar things here in the fourth stanza second line if you observe i have learned to wear many faces like dresses many faces like dresses here the word like is used to compare faces with dresses likewise in the same stanza fifth line with all their conforming smiles like a fixed portrait smile here the smile is compared to fixed portrait smile the word like is used in the same way uh, sixth stanza last line my teeth like snakes bear fangs here the poet's teeth the father's teeth are compared like compared with snakes bear fangs here the word like is used to compare now we will discuss about the possible questions the first one is what frightens when the poet sees his smile in the mirror which poetic device is used when the poet sees his smile in the mirror there was no genuineness frankness sincerity and warm feelings instead of those positive qualities he sees no joy no shine uh, on his face but his teeth are shown as snakes bear fangs in the mirror that is the why he frightened when he uh, sees his smile in the mirror the positive qualities are gone and he was able to see only the negative side of his life there is no joy on his face there is no shy on his face no joy on his smile and no shine on his face that's why his smile uh, looks like a his teeth are looks like a snake's bare fangs so he was very much very much frightened the poetic device here used is a simile because i already explained teeth are compared with snake's bare fangs second question how do the people in the poem use language to hide their emptiness and hypocrisy the poem explains about the changes the father has seen in him throughout his life and those changes are the result of the society's influence on him the people in the poem say feel at home come again but actually these words uh, actually they are saying it in a positive way but their inner intentions are entirely different if we take those words for granted and if we visit their home once twice it is okay good but the third time you can surely find the doors are shutting on your face they also use the words goodbye feeling good riddance and they use, they say glad to meet you feeling without uh, glad and say nice talking to you but they are feeling very much bored all these phrases clearly states that the people are hiding their true feelings and behaving like hypocrites third question do you think the poet is optimistic discuss yes the poet is optimistic at the initial state because of the society's influence he learned all the muting things like a artificial smile mechanical shake hand lack of trust focusing on personal gain cheating being dishonest but later he realized and he feels quite unhappy for all those evil changes and makes a plea to his son to show and teach how to be genuine and because his son was not at influenced by the society and he is still innocent not corrupted by the society that's why he is requesting his son with an optimistic manner 
uh, he's requesting that he can develop all those pos possible positive qualities which he left in his life last question the poem is a satire on the behavior of modern man discuss the poet is pained when he looks back in his past in his childhood he had seen people laughing with hearts and shaking hands with warm did not wear different masks on different occasions but the things are entirely different now modern man is artificial and hypocritic so he wants to forget all these and learn the natural and cordial behavior from his untamed son we can say that the poet is indirectly criticizing the modern man's behavior through this particular poem i think all of you understood the poem these are the references i have used to explain about this poem thank you very much